Hello and welcome back everyone, I'm Blumada Banana and this is Aurora 4X, our epic space strategy with little less appealing graphics but still a lot of complexity to it and I think in the last episode we started to explore Uranus, um, Uranus or the Sol system as a whole and I do think that our geological survey vessel over here has found some materials that are, well, good for us and that we want to colonize and get. For example, as you can see here, I'm at the minerals tab. We found quite some neutronium and actually we found a lot of neutronium on Mars as well as, well, just a tiny sliver of corbamite, but hey, we, we will take it. 0.9 accessibility sounds good. A uh, bunch of boronite at a really low accessibility, but hey, it's it's all rightish. It will trickle in slowly, but that's good. And also a crap ton of mercassium. And mercassium is actually pretty good to have because I think it's one of the main ingredients for research labs. Yeah, you can see it here. 1200 mercassium. And in one of my test games, actually, I ran out of mercassium rather quickly. Uh, as you can see, our mining, mining tab looks really dire. We will run out of a lot of materials over the next, well, 4 to 30 years. So we need, we need to explore, we need to expand, we need to exploit other planets and hopefully our geological survey vessel will give us some idea where to go next. Another thing that I have planned for the future, and as you can see we actually are a little bit more in the future because I thought I kind of advanced time a little bit in between episodes, but one thing that we want to do is we want to head to Luna. Now why do we want to go to Luna? There's nothing there. Well. At the moment, we're actually losing some wealth. And that's because we don't have enough people paying taxes, I think. And if we start a colony on Luna, and maybe on Mars, we're going to generate a lot more, well, income. And now that I come to think of it, and I, if, if you look at this thing here, infrastructure per required per million population, it's the same thing. That's actually pretty good. So I think we skip Luna and head straight to Mars. Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's get let's get to Mars. So, if we want to colonize Mars, there's one thing that we need, as you can see, infrastructure. But how do we get the infrastructure over there? We can't build it if, if there are no people over there. So, we need a we need a freighter, a transport a transporting vessel to transport infrastructure and mines and all the good stuff around, um, well, the solar system. And I think we need to get a new engine for that. I click this button over here, create research project, and I think we're going for a new engine. Because the last engine that we have is a ion drive. And now we have magnetoplasma at our hands, so why the hell do we not do it, uh, build a new engine for our commercial vessels? That means we're going to pull, uh, put down the power, just tune it down, but increase the efficiency by a lot. We're going to take, of course, the best efficiency multiplier for fuel consumption that we have. That's just, um, well, the default value, actually. Uh, I also kind of researched some thermal reduction signature, but I think that just increases, yeah, you can see it increases the cost. And I don't think that's necessary for a freighter to be stealthy or harder to be detected by uh, thermal sensors. So we're going to leave that as is and we're going for the biggest hull size that we can get now we have a 300 engine power engine over here and if you look at our old one it's let me see oh the atlas mk1 that's the test version of that same vessel uh has let me see the mcdonald brian aero marine 240 yeah so we add another 80 engine power to this so i think it's worth it to upgrade this design, I think, is rather okay. I mean, as you can see, it's really slow. I mean, it's really goddamn slow. But it's a freighter. It doesn't need to be that fast. Sure, if it's if it would be faster, we could deliver goods more rapidly. But for our first freighter, I think it's it's all right. 44 billion kilometers as for the range seems fine. I think we would even get a little less um, fuel consumption with the new engine. So I, I'm. I'm I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. So let's let's go for a new magnetoplasma drive. Let's go for some autumn 
names let's go for i don't know nor is in green perfect nor is in green magnetics these are the guys that built this engine and we're going to click create once again you don't get any message that it has been created it's just really subtle but it's there but first we need to research it also these are the current researches that we have i want to increase our, our thermal sensor sen sensitivity also he's got quite the queue so cameron Hodge hodgson yeah hodgson has quite the queue ahead of him he needs to go for thermal sensors active gravity sensors i think that's graph gravity sensors electromagnetic sensors and he has to upgrade our uh, fire control speed rating for um, beam fire weapons so I think this guy is going to be quite busy, quite busy. Patrick Abbott researching the new Tokamak fusion reactor technology. Um, reactors, by the way, I never used them here, uh, but in my test game I realized they're used to power energy weapons like, um, let me take a look, like lasers or meson or microwave or car these are plasma kernels. So these are all powered by by reactors so they need those as kind of ammo if you want to call it but that's basically it what we have at the uh, running at the moment maybe we want to improve um, the colonization costs but it's fine I think it's it's all right um, I'd rather increase our terraforming rate and start terraforming Mars and I think we should do this so let's take two laps of this guy let's take three of this guy it doesn't even change the date they finish look at that perfect then we take one more and Peter Burgess is going to research oh he can only go for five laps anyways yeah it's fine you're going to research terraforming rate you're going to improve that and we're going to queue up the terraforming module and the oops I forgot to queue it uh, because the terraforming module is actually a thing that you can strap on the ship and terraform from orbit so I think that's actually a cool thing to do having maybe two or, uh, orbital stationary things or actually not stationary mobile things actually and they will they will um, terraform from orbit and now I, I thought maybe I forgot something, didn't I? And I did. The Norris and Green Magnetics, of course, has to be researched. So let's take another one of this guy. It's still the 19th of February? Oh, because it's today! That's... that's why. It's going to be finished anyway. Oh, yeah, sure. So let's take all but five. And give George Turner a chance to create this. Okay, let's see. The fusion, Norris and Green, will be done 21st of April. Hmm. Yeah, alright. About one and a half months. That's fine. Good. So let's go for a 30 day tick. And then we are on the 19th of March. And then once more, and it should be fine. Sure. Also, we need... We hopefully get some new administrators. We need some more civilian administrators. I do, don't think... Let's take a look. Maybe we've got a new one. So we have Che Moran. He could be the governor of Earth, at least. But his bonuses are less than ideal. But I think it's better than nothing. So congratulations, you have a new job. You're the governor of Earth. I mean, shipbuilding, yeah, it's okay. Could be worse. 25 increased factory production is actually not too shabby. The rest is rather useless. But once again, we it's better to have something than, not, than nothing, right? Okay, so something is finished, if I'm not mistaken. But it's not the Magneto. Oh, another five day tick, so. 
five days is, I think, the least amount of days that you have to advance to get to a new, um, well, to to register that the game registers that something has happened. I think that's you could say that. So the active craft sensors are getting some love again. Perfect. And now we're going to design or finish the design for the Atlas Mark One, which is, will be our freighter. Now, defense, yeah, ceramic composite armor, doesn't really matter, it's fine, or ceramic, I'm, I'm okay with this. The McDonald Bryan Aeromarine Ion Drive, nope, we're going to take the Norris and Green Magnetics, Norris and Green Magnetics um, commercial, what's again? Magnetoplasma Drive. But I think it's much bigger now. Are we slower with this? No, we're not. We're faster. So 420 versus 561. It's not that... It's not really, really a lot better, but a, a, a tiny little bit. 44 billion kilometers versus... 44.6. Okay, they use the same, the same amount. Oh, well. It's fine. Okay, so they have 900 days, so it's, what, 930, uh, 30 months, isn't it? Yeah, 30 times 30 is 900, perfect. Good, so that must be, that's it. We use a, a large fuel storage and not a, a standard one. So we have five, uh, 250,000 liters. Uh, 44 billion kilometers should be enough. If you look at this, um, I don't know. What's the first we want to transport stuff? Maybe to Neptune and back. So, whoops, so Neptune and back. Let's go, uh, let's go for worst case scenario that we are on the other side on our orbit than Neptune is. So we have to move through. Directly through the sun, of course. So this would be, what, 7... 7 billion kilometers? Yeah. Oh, 6 billion, okay. Times 2 means 12 billion kilometers. And we exceed that by a long shot. So that should be... That should be enough. That should be easily enough. Alright, so the Atlas MK1 looks good. It has a standard cargo hull. Or a standard cargo... Bay? Is it called bay? Cargo bay? Cargo hold, yeah. Standard cargo hold. For 20, with uh, 25,000 uh, points of capacity. Which is great because a lot of things come in bunches of 5,000. So this can hold a lot. Let's just do that. Uh, we have a cargo handling system. Which is down here somewhere. Oh, maybe because I already have it. You can't take it? No? Oh, there. Cargo handling system. So it this increases the... The speed for loading and unloading. So I think it's oops, it's it's a good idea to have one at least. Oh, I got rid of the cargo hold. Oh, huh, weird. Must have misclicked then. But I think this is a good thing. So the Atlas MK1, but it won't be a geological service vessel. It will be a freighter, not a fighter. Freighter? No, no, it's a frigate. There we go. So Atlas MK1, it's a ship, it's a freighter, and it's going to haul our stuff through space. But first, we need to tell one of our shipyards to build it. Or to tool for it. So let's go for... Ah, damn it, that was a stupid idea. Why, do I, why did I do this? Why did I tell those guys to build the GV uh, Procurator? That's... I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'm going to retool for the Atlas MK1, set activity, it's free and instant because it's the first one. And the Atlas Mark 1 will be the first of its name. Ah, it's just called Atlas. Perfect. Arts class, actually. Yeah, just Atlas, that's fine. It's going to go into the shipyard task group, because why the hell not, doesn't really matter. Ah, well, let's move it to cargo task group. Ah, ship your task group. Uh, that's the one that I will look for when I when it's finished. And that's where I will look for it when it's finished. Alright, so it's going to be built. In... Wow, that's actually pretty fast. Even less than a year. Hm, perfect. So now we are only... We only have to wait and hope 
that these guys are going to find something. But these guys, are, of course, I mean... RGV Procurator, the Geological Survey Team. Hopefully this list will expand by a lot. We need we need materials. We need we need minerals. We need stuff to build other stuff with. That's how it works usually. Ah, damn it. We have some inactive labs. So, do we want to start something new? I'm going to add another research research lab over here. Let's just take a look through the list. Could we do? Maybe something cheap. Hmm, he's build he's getting the terraforming rate. That's fine. I think building a, a colony on Mars is actually really the next best thing to do. And then we should start thinking thinking about some kind of defense. Sadly, we don't have any a specialist for any. Oh, we got a specialist for energy weapons. Look at that! I didn't see that. That's cool. The last uh, last time I checked, we didn't have one. Ha! Huh, great. So I think we are going to go into maybe one or two of these. Now lasers are kind of like your cookie cutter thing. They are good at uh, well, low to medium range, I think. Then you have your Mason focal, uh, your Mason cannons. They always do, I think, one damage. I read a little bit up. I read a little bit on the wiki because I, I, you can't really go blind into this. But I think Mason cannons are Mason cannons are good against or, or good point defense weapons as they always deal just one damage. That's perfect to destroy incoming missiles. Your microwave weapons are bypassing shields, and I think that they are directly attacking the enemy electronics. And the plasma carronets are your really point blank type weapon that really packs a punch for at, at low range. So you need to get close with these things. But then they then they wreck face. But other than the lasers, these have, I think, the, uh, a missile damage pattern. I last episode, I, I think I talked about this, but you can see this here. Well, darn it. Come on. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's, come on. Ah, there we have it. it that's actually the missile and laser. Uh, damage profile. I found this on the wiki and I thought it, it, it looks really cool. Um, if you have a missile that deals one damage, then it you, you can think of this as um, your hull. Your hull is... The ship's hull is um, always um, made up of these little plates, right? So we have your first layer, that's indicated by this one over here, that's your first layer of armor. Then you have your second layer of armor, don't want to move this, second layer of armor, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. So if you have a missile that deals one point of damage it, and it randomly strikes at this tile over here, it will deal this one damage over here. You have a two damage missile, you deal this and this. Three damage, you, you splash it out over these three tiles. And as you can see, the fourth point of damage will be dealt to the next layer of armor. If this is inside the ship, or maybe, you know, this could be your engine, you would deal one damage, one hit to the engine, and if the engine has one hit to kill, I think you will destroy the engine by this. So this is how missile damage is, is done, and as you can see, it's like this triangular shape. Also, if you can see, that in the middle of this is always a number that is uh, squared. So that's two squared, three squared, four squared, and that's five squared. So if you, you'd you like to have missiles that deal squared amount of damage. A 25 damage missile has this profile and deals this amount of damage. As you can see, a nice little crater up to the fifth layer of, of, um, of armor. If you have 10 layers of armor, I think, and you hit exactly this thing again, then you will get this just copied down and penetrate to the 10th layer. Oops. But... Lasers, on the other hand, have a really nice 
Um, well, not really a, a, a narrower triangle. Almost triangle. That penetrates a lot deeper. Now, as you can see, the first three damage are dealt in a single straight line and penetrate down to the third layer of armor. The fourth and the fifth are starting to to do some kind of splash, but the sixth amount, uh, the sixth damage is already on the next layer. Then it, you know, then seven, eight, nine. So it looks like ten, eleven, twelve. You want numbers that are, um, well, multiples of three, other than, of course, the, the first, the, the two here. 17 is kind of like out of the uh, out of the ordinary here, as is 22. So these two are not multiples of three, but the next to 27 is again. So it's really interesting to, if you want to start optimizing your lasers and stuff. But, yeah, well, you know, min-maxing. Min-maxing. Anyways, let's go back to the game and think about what kind of weapons we want to use. Now, I think Karanets are using the same damage profile as missiles, so we're not going to use them because we could use a missile. I think we're going to go into lasers a little bit more. I like lasers. Lasers are cool. So we're going to create the, uh, create the new laser project. Also, and the next thing that we want to focus on, I think, is the upgrade on the laser wavelength. Now we have a visible light laser, as you can see, laser wavelength technology. The higher a laser wavelength, the less the laser loses power with range. Therefore, higher wavelength lasers will cause more damage along a range. Now that doesn't really make sense. Because as far as I've understood, we're currently using, that should be frequency, not wavelength. Because if you go to to higher wavelengths, the frequency goes down, and, and higher wavelength would mean that you go into infrared. But I think we're currently at infrared, and this is a visible light laser. And I, I know for a fact that the next would be a ne near um, UV laser. Then you get to UV lasers and X-ray lasers, but the X-ray laser has a shorter wavelength. If you can call it actually a laser. But they have shorter wavelengths than... Um, yeah, yeah, shorter wavelength, higher frequency, pretty sure. Oh well, doesn't matter, it's a, it's kind of a typo, that's fine. Don't, I don't think we should, um, kind of be like, oh my god, that's so wrong. Can happen. You know, it's, it's a classic, if you have an exam, and you get a, you get a 50-50 Cho you know, a multiple choice, or actually just not really multiple, but a two a binary choice. Um, you always you always go for the wrong one. It's 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 every every time, every time. Even though it shouldn't be like that, but it is. I don't know why. Every time I I had an, a 50-50 chance on an exam, I, I chose wrong. Most likely, I, I remember it that way. But but hey, it's 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 a law. It's Murphy's law, right? Kind of like. But again, I think we should go slightly into um, into missiles and lasers. Now, why do I, oh, and maybe particle beams? That's so that those sound pretty interesting as well. Oh, and we got our first freighter. Perfect. So why do I want to have these? Well, I think lasers sound pretty good for medium range engagements and medium range enga engagements. Is is okay. I mean, they they're pretty good. Also, you can't destroy a laser beam coming in. You can't really block it. I think that I think shields maybe, but I don't know. So, I think a laser should be good, and maybe some missile frigates, uh, some laser frigates, for a little closer thing. Maybe we go for some missile attack boats, or fighters as they're called. I'm looking for automated mines. Perfect. Going to load automated mines on Earth. We have them. We're going to bring them to Mars. Going to unload them there. Then go back to Earth. Refuel from colony. Just to make sure. And then we're going to repeat this whole process, let's say, 19 times. Click repeat. And the list gets filled with this. 
Now why 19 times? Because the first um, the first order that I put in manually is, is there and it adds 19 to the list. So now we, uh, we should get this. Come on. It kind of slows down a bit the game, doesn't it? Oh, I have auto turns. Okay, that's... Alright, there we go. See? Atlas, unload automated mine Mars. Then that means you should just fly to Mars. But I think we're zoomed out too far, so we can't really see. Yeah, and I'm focused on, I don't know, is it Neptune? Yeah, I think so. Let's turn off auto turns for a second there. And focus on Earth. There we go. Now we can watch the freighter Atlas unloading its automated mines. Once again, we can all rename everything. So if you have better names, leave a comment. I would very much like to have your input to, on this. I really enjoy the game. I don't know if, if you if you do. So I I can't tell you enough how, how interesting and in-depth this game actually is. And we only scratched the surface, really. Uh, you might have seen the, the screen, you know, the engine, where we designed the engines. And when we start building our fleet, and this will be hopefully rather soon, we will need to build so many interesting things. We need sensors, we need fire controls, we need different missiles, we need, I don't know, we need, well, new engines, of course. We need maybe armor, maybe shields, and every every one of these components can be tweaked. And I think that's something that you that really gives you the, the satisfaction when you get a cool design that works. And I've no, no clue if I, I still wasn't in battle, at, even if my t at my test game uh, over the weekend. Which I spent once again at my parents uh, because they needed some help with uh, the gardening, and uh, so I I just tried my my test game over there. It looks it, it looks really cool. I have some some defense on the jump points, and we're all we're coming to that. We're we're going to to dominate not only the soul system but the whole galaxy, or at least every in inch that we can find. Or that we can travel to. So we finished, but there are no available labs because we have, well, a really nice queue. Uh, this guy is building automated mines and we're going to build 10 financial centers because I have no clue what they do. But it, it seems like that they just increase our wealth production. That's fine enough. And we're going to build 2,000 installations of um, infrastructure. As you can see, they're pretty cheap. I did this in between episodes. And those are going to be put on Mars. Since they need 2000, uh, 200 uh, installations or 200 infrastructure per 1 million population, that should mean that we could support 10 million people on Mars, which is, I think, a pretty decent start. Also, I might start to... Um, I might start to terraform. That's over here. Might start to terraform this a little bit more. Carbon dioxide is actually not too bad of an, of an atmosphere. We should start adding a little bit more nitrogen. Then we're going to add, of course, oxygen. And then we're going for some safe greenhouse gases to warm the planet up a bit. It will take some time, of course, but um, it will work. It will work. If you can see, still didn't change that. But I added a new flag. Well, there we go. That's fine. But that wasn't what I wanted to show you, actually. I wanted to show you that we need uh, 0.2 atmospheres of oxygen. And that can deviate by, well, 0.1. So that means we should go to 0.1 <laughs> oxygen content. That should, that should be enough. It will take some time. It will take some time. But hey, we, we, have, we have some. We have, we have time. We have time. We're going to, well, win. We're going to win. I can feel it, and even though it sounds like I'm I'm Donald Trump here, and just we uh, we will win so much that you will get tired of winning. Um, but we're we're going to do that, pretty sure. Actually, I'm not sure. I have no clue. Anyways, you can see Atlas is flying 
back and forth between Mars and Earth. That's pretty great. And as soon as they're as soon as they're done, we might start shipping out um, infrastructure. Hopefully they're hopefully they should they should be there. They should be there. So, so they they're done in a month with the financial centers. That's great. And then I know for a fact that infrastructure gets built pretty gosh darn fast. So that's great. Yeah. And then we add, we add some terraforming installations. They're pretty good. They are expensive. But we need them. And I would say 10 should be should be enough for, for the first planet. Also, we can ship them, you know, from Earth over to Venus. Or we can ship them from Mars back to Luna when we start colonizing, uh, colonizing that. Um, so we have we have stuff to do. We have stuff to do. All right. So now that these guys are flying tirelessly from left to right, and we have you know to wait for some interesting, uh, well, research to get done. I think I will just leave you right here. Also, we are kind of out of time, as I just realized. So, we're going to research a bit in between episodes. And as soon as we get we get to well, get to some really cool breakpoints like maybe the Tokamak fusion reactor, we're going to start maybe with um some kind of defense for our sector over here. As you can see all these dots, you know, that are labeled, you know, 17, 18, 16 and so on and so forth. Uh, I makes jump here to 19, yeah. All these are potential gateways to other parts of the galaxy. Uh, that's not the system, that's the sector map. I, oh, somewhere over here is this map that I wanted to show you. But if we, oh, there it is. Is it? No, that's... Ah, uh, oh, damn it. It was the one right next to it. That's the last, that's the last thing I want to show you. Those are just all the, the plants that we found, and the blue ones are easy to colonize, and the red ones are pretty... Uh, are more difficult. But that's the system map. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So that's the system, and we don't know any else, uh, anybody else, but every jump point, all these points, could have a potential tunnel, if you will, to another system, to another solar system. And maybe it's a dead end, or maybe you can jump back and forth and back to our system and over there. So it's it could be. It could it could potentially be dangerous on the other side, and that's that means we should survey this fast, and then build some defenses on the spots. But yeah, that's that's the content for future episodes. I hope you like this one. If you want to see more, then please consider pressing a like button. That's not a great deal. Also to determine if you like this or not. And I really do hope that I see you in the next episode. So thanks for watching and as always, auf Wiedersehen.